Good afternoon, everyone. NSIDC showing surface melt already April 27th, even putting a blip on the Greenland melt extent for 2017. Notice the timestamp on that. And then we jump over to Null School on April 27th, same day they showed melting, same location in the green circle, minus 2.6 C. And I thought, wait a minute, let me take a look on the 28th, minus 3.3 C. And then I said, well, maybe today the 29th, maybe that was a mistype, maybe it's melting on the 29th, minus 1.1 C. And I said, no, that can't be, let me zoom in. Just, it's right at the edge of melting at minus 0.3 C, right on the very coastal area. That has to be on land to be considered the Greenland ice cap, doesn't it? Now, I was brought up in a school system that taught me that ice forms below freezing and it does not melt until it's above freezing. So then in the same NSIDC website, Greenland Surface Melt Interactive Chart, it shows a trend of less melting into April. So what happens? That doesn't fit the narrative. So if it gets all the way into the first week of May, that's going to be the longest recorded number of days without the beginning of ice melting on the Greenland ice sheet. A record almost so far of non-melt days. That surely goes against the narrative of global warming. Why do you think they put that erroneous fake ice melt day? And back to the U.S., Winter storm warning out for Denver, Colorado area. Expecting at least a foot of snow over the next day or so, and then over the next four days, up to two feet. Taking a look at Knoll School again, North America. Look how far down that cold air mass is penetrating. Minus 20 C. And you thought the spring was over. Looks like the grand solar minimum is intensifying with those out of season cold events and there seems to be a concerted effort to prevent a new record being set for the onset of greenland ice melt and please remember to subscribe to adapt 2030 and i hope you liked what you saw in the video and please visit foodforliberty.com a full range of heirloom vegetable seeds enough to grow several acres non-gmo and in these times of uncertain weather you're going to have to be more responsible for supplying some of your own food locally.